This is a key bed. And surprisingly, the technology behind how these work has not really changed in 40 years. This one's from a Korg Poly 6 built in 1981. And the way it works and the mechanism and, and the technology used is pretty much identical to this Yamaha montage sitting behind here that is still made today. So let's have a look. How do these things work? And how do they know how hard you're playing? Coming up next. The technology behind these key beds hasn't changed in 40 years because I think what they came up with really kind of works well. So all we have is a bunch of plastic keys on a metal frame with springs. Now, different manufacturers have different methods of putting springs on the keys in order to make them spring back up. This one has actual little springs in the back. Roland I had little pieces of spring steel. If you have a look at the uh, JD800 restoration video I did, you can see all the little tiny springs on the Roland key bed. So they have those springs so that the keys spring back up. You have felt both on the way down and on the way up. That means that when you press a key, it lands softly and gently instead of hitting hard against like a piece of metal on the frame. And that comes from pianos because pianos use felt to cushion their keys as well. If you didn't have that felt and the keys were just hitting a piece of metal, it'd be like pl trying to play the counter. Your, your fingers and your joints would get pretty sore pretty quickly. So that felt landing is what gives it that soft feel. Each key when it presses, has a little piece of plastic that pushes down on a little piece of conductive rubber that makes contact on this circuit board. And that's how the, the synthesizer knows that you've pressed an individual key. So that's what we'll have a look at next. So this circuit board is held against the back of this key bed. And so that when the keys come up, they can push the contacts. I'm gonna remove these screws so that we can remove the circuit board and get a better view of exactly how it all works. And there is our contact strip. So as you can see, when you press a key, this little piece of plastic pushes through here, and that pushes on each of these little rubber contacts. And if we have a look at a new one of these, you can see the rubber contact has black conductive carbon. So there's a, a conductive surface on there that is painted onto the silicone rubber. Here you can see the gold-plated contacts that the rubber contacts on the silicone portions connect to. So as you can see, they're basically just a switch. So when you push this down, this rubber contact pushes down and connects the two parts of this little switch together. By pushing that switch down, the synthesizer sees that the key has been pressed and it knows to sound the note. Now this is a very simple, non-velocity sensitive keyboard. All it knows is that you've pressed a key and it knows when you've pushed it down, it knows when you've lifted it up. It doesn't know how hard you've hit the key. So how do modern synthesizers know that I pushed this one gently, but I've pushed this one really hard so that it can play different sounds like this. It's actually very simple, and the answer is they don't. They have no idea how hard you're hitting it. However, what it does know is how quickly you're hitting it. So that's why they call it velocity-sensitive keyboards. If we have a look at a contact that came from a velocity-sensitive keyboard, you'll notice one important difference. The velocity-sensitive keyboard has two contacts instead of just one. And if we look really closely, you can probably tell that one of those contacts is raised up a little bit higher than the other one. So what happens on a velocity sensitive key bed is there's two sets of contacts lined up for each key. And when you press this down, because one of the contacts is slightly closer than the other one, it hits just before on this one, before this one hits. 
And all the keyboard has to do then, because it has computers and it can, it can time things very, very accurately, is measure the difference between when this one hits and when this one hits. The shorter the time, the harder you're hitting the key, the faster the key is going down. That's how it measures velocity. Well, that explains velocity, but what about aftertouch? Well, there's two different kinds of aftertouch. The first aftertouch is like you see on the montage. It's called channel aftertouch. What that means is once you've played a key, if you push any of those keys harder, it changes something about the sound you're listening to. However, it does it to all the notes being played, like this. I've set up this patch, which is kind of a ridiculous patch, but it's just for a demonstration. So when I play a chord, if I push into aftertouch, it's going to alter the pitch of all the notes in that chord. So I'm going to press on one of the keys with my, I'll press the C with my thumb. If you notice, all three notes are, are actually changing. If I play a, a larger chord, and it doesn't matter which key I push, they all do the exact same thing. They all affect the pitch of the, of the chord because in this patch, I told the aftertouch, right here you can see the aftertouch, I told it to affect the pitch. Now, polyphonic aftertouch is different. Like on the hydrosynth here, each individual key can affect its own aftertouch. The hydrosynth is different. It has polyphonic aftertouch. So each individual key has an, its own polyphonic aftertouch sensor. So instead of one sensor for the entire key bed, each key has its own. So if I play a C major chord, and now I push harder on the C, the C gets louder. If I push harder on the E, the E gets louder. Same for the G. So by even though I'm holding this one chord, I can alter what's playing in the chord. So how does that work? Well, exactly how you think it might. For channel aftertouch, there's a pressure sensitive strip that's embedded underneath the felt that you hit when you push the key down. Anywhere you push along that strip, that pressure sensitive strip, the synthesizer knows that somewhere on the key bed, one of the keys is getting pushed harder than the other keys. And it knows that in, in proportion to how hard you're pressing to increase the the aftertouch that's being played. A polyphonic aftertouch key bed is a little bit different. On the hydrosynth, you have the exact same key bed layout. However, there's a second contact down below. It looks kind of like the ones above, the rubber contact. However, instead of just an on-off switch, it's pressure sensitive for that individual key. That's why when you push, when you play a polyphonic aftertouch key bed, like on the hydrosynth, you play the key down, and then if you push it a little bit further, it feels almost a little bit spongy. And that's because you're pushing into that rubber pressure sensor for that key. And that's how they accomplish polyphonic aftertouch. Let's talk about the problems you can encounter with these key beds. The first is when you have a bunch of keys that stop working. So that could be either, say, one every uh, fifth key might stop working entirely or you have a block of maybe six keys in a row that stop working, but all the other ones are working fine. If that's the case, usually what's happened is one of these wires has either gotten cut or the contact has gotten bad or maybe one of these connectors has gotten corroded. But if you, if you disconnect one of these wires, that's typically what you will see. You'll either see a block of keys that don't work, but all the rest of them do, or depending on which wire it is, you may see every, fifth key or every sixth key stops working. So if you see that type of failure, it's usually going to be electrical. You need to open up and have a look at the electrical contacts. Now, if you have the key bed is working, however, there are some keys that work sometimes, or more commonly, you press this key and it works, but if you push this one, it doesn't, but you have to hit it harder. 
And if you hit that one harder, it plays. So if you have some keys that you have to hit harder than others in order to get them to play, or if, if you have a velocity sensitive key bed like on the Montage, or like most modern synths, and you press a key evenly across and some play louder and pl some play softer, the issue usually then is dirty contacts. These contacts are not switches. They're not just on off switches like a, like a metal. It's carbon against metal. So the harder the carbon gets pushed against the contact, the better conductivity you have. And the synthesizer is set up so that when it sees it, a certain amount of current flowing, it knows that key is pressed down. And so there's a calibration somewhere in the design of the, of the synthesizer that knows everything over this amount of current is a key press. However, if you've got dirt or grime or dust or some kind of, of foreign substance in here that causes one of these contacts to have a little bit more resistance than the other, that's gonna change the level at which that the synthesizer detects that key being pressed. Same thing goes for velocity. When you have those double key beds, if you have two of them in there and one of them is, is uh, not giving as much current as the others, that could cause the synthesizer to think that you're hitting a key harder or softer than the others incorrectly. And that means that key is gonna play louder or quieter than the other keys. In both cases, the solution is to do what I just did here, take the key bed apart, pull these contacts off, clean the contacts, uh, either clean these or replace them uh, and then reassemble it. If you do clean these, uh, there are some special cleaners meant just for this. I'll put a link to one down below. If that is the case, do not get the cleaner on the rubber part. Make sure you use just like a Q-tip and clean just the carbon part because the cleaner will cause these to melt. You don't want to have that to happen. So just a, a gentle amount of the, um, I believe it is deoxit. It's deoxit carbon contact cleaner specifically for this. I'll put a link to it in the description below. A little bit on a Q-tip, rub it on the carbon contact, clean it, put it all back together. And that's it. That's everything you need to know about synthesizer key beds. If you like what you saw, please click like, subscribe, click the little bell. You'll get notified every time we post one of these videos. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave them in the, in the comment section below. I definitely read and reply to all those comments. Thanks for watching.